Hi, welcome to the new section, Native C++ Threads and Primitives. Starting with the 2011 revision of the C++ standard, a multi-threading API is officially part of the C++ standard template library. This means that threads, thread primitives, and synchronization mechanisms are available to any new C++ application. In this section, we will focus on thread class, mutex, condition variable, and future. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with thread class. In this video, we're going to take a look at basic use of thread class, passing parameters, moving threads, and thread ID. The thread class is the core of the entire threading API. It wraps the underlying operating system threads and provides the functionality we need to start and stop threads. This functionality is made accessible by including the thread header. Upon creating a thread, it is started immediately. This code would start the thread to then immediately terminate the application, because we are not waiting for the new thread to finish executing. To do this properly, we need to wait for the thread to finish or rejoin. So, in this code, we first start the thread and then wait for it to finish with the help of join method. It's also possible to pass parameters to a new thread. These parameter values have to be more constructible, which means that it's a type which has a move or copy constructor. In this code, we pass an integer and string to the thread function. This function will receive copies of both variables. When passing references or pointers, things get more complicated with lifecycle issues, data races and such, becoming a potential problem. Any value returned by the function passed to the thread class constructor is ignored. To return information to the thread which created the new thread, one has to use inter-thread synchronization mechanisms and some kind of shared variable. The 2011 standard adds standard move to the utility header. Using this template method, one can move resources between objects. This means that it can also move thread instances. In this version of the code, we create a thread before moving it to another thread. Thread 0 thus ceases to exist, and the execution of the thread function resumes in the new thread that we create. As a result of this, we do not have to wait for the first thread to rejoin, but only for the second one. Moving on to thread ID, take a look at this code example. Each thread has an identifier associated with it. This ID, or handle, is a unique identifier provided by the STL implementation. It can be obtained by calling the getID function of the thread class instance, or by calling standard this thread getID to get the ID of the thread calling the function. Let's run this code. First, the make file. Then the binary file called code1. Here we see that the internal thread ID is an integer standard thread ID type relative to the initial thread. This is comparable to most native thread IDs, such as those for POSIX. These can also be obtained by using native handle. That function will return whatever the underlying native thread handle. It is particularly useful when one wishes to use a specific P thread or Win32 thread functionality that's not available in the STL implementation. It's possible to delay the execution of a thread using either of two methods. One is sleep for, which delays execution by at least the specified duration, but possibly longer. This code shows how to sleep for roughly two seconds, measuring the exact duration using a counter with the highest precision possible on the current OS. Note that we are able to specify the number of seconds directly with the seconds post fix. This is a C++14 feature that got added to the chrono header. For the C++11 version, one has to create an instance of standard chrono seconds and pass it to the sleep for function. The other method is sleep until, which takes a single parameter of type standard chrono time point clock duration. Using this function, one can set a thread to sleep until the specified time point has been reached. Due to the operating system scheduling priorities, this wake-up time might not be the exact time as specified. 
one can indicate to the OS that the current thread can be rescheduled so that the other threads can run instead. For this, one uses the standard this thread yield function. The exact result of this function depends on the underlying OS implementation and its scheduler. In the case of the FIFO scheduler, it's likely that the calling thread will be put at the back of the queue. This is a highly specialized function with special use cases. It should not be used without first validating its effect on the application's performance. After starting a thread, one can call detach on the thread object. This effectively detaches the new thread from the calling thread, meaning that the former will continue executing even after the calling thread has exited. Using swap, either as a standalone method or as a function of a thread instance, one can exchange the underlying thread handles of thread objects. Let's run this code. Navigate to the directory cd swap. Run the make command and then code one binary file. So we have obtained this output. The effect of this is that the state of each thread is swapped with that of the other thread, essentially exchanging their identities. You can see the thread ID 1 and 2 initially, and then their swapped values. And here, IDs are swapped again. That's all about thread class.